Hello and welcome to Huddersfield Town's preview show in association with Sports Broker after a 1-1 draw at home with Birmingham City. To talk us through the action, I'm delighted to say I'm joined by former Huddersfield Town player Ian Dunn and the athletic sports writer Richard Sutcliffe. How are you both? You okay? Good, Very good, you. thanks. Are you? Excellent. Yeah, not too bad, thank you. Um, so, see, obviously uh, you were here at, at the John Smith Stadium Ultimately, it's not a bad point, but equally, uh, I think everyone wanted more. <laughs> yeah, very much so. And when you go in front, you know, with the quality of your goal as well, you know, you're you know, half an hour to go, you think the breakthrough's made. It wasn't a good game. You know, let's, let's not beat around the bush with that. You know, town, particularly in the first half, were a bit, went a bit long, I thought. But once you're in front, you know, the quality of the strike, you really do expect, you know, the three points. So, you know, sitting here now, obviously, what, five minutes, 10 minutes since the final whistle and it just feel like two lost, if I'm honest, rather than one game. You know, that might change in the morning, but uh, at the moment it feels a bit disappointing. I think that that was the impetus going into this one, wasn't it, Ian? It was uh, a sense that, that it was a game where we could get three points and three points to stretch us away from the relegation zone. But ultimately it could have been very different and it could have dragged us in even more, to be fair. Yeah, I mean, you look at the table prior to the game and, yeah, three points makes, you know, there's a, the other teams have a lot of games to, to sort of play to catch, catch up with us at that point. Three points would have been ideal, of course it would, but to be honest, the point on reflection, I think we'll reflect and look back and think it's probably a, a hard-earned point, really. You look at the chance they had at the end, which would have been absolutely, you know, devastating because Birmingham... Birmingham didn't deserve to win. They were all right and they battled hard, but there's no way, you know, if, if Town had lost that game, I think it'd have been, you'd have felt like the world was against us. Thankfully, they didn't. I think it was a very hard earned point and, and one we might look back on and think, you know, it stopped Birmingham getting three points. That was, that was really important. Yeah, exactly. And so you touched upon it earlier. It wasn't the, the greatest game of football by, by any means. Um, and to be honest, the, the first of the her first half was pretty non-eventful, um, apart from an incident in the the first six minutes. Um, I know, obviously, you you haven't seen a replay back, and Ian might be able to to help us with that in in just a moment. But uh, it it looked like a a pretty nasty challenge from from Harley Dean. It did, and you know, it's it's the player he's up against as well. Obviously, Richard Steeman is not the sort, and never has been in his career to go down and try and get somebody in any trouble, you know, he was caught, you know, and obviously he had to change his shirt about 10 minutes later. So there was obviously blood came, uh, came from wherever he was caught. The referee, I did look straight at him as soon as, you know, as soon as Steers hit the, hit the ground and he, he, he had his yellow card out straight away. So he'd obviously decided in that split second that it was a yellow card. Like I said, I've not seen the replay. Um, you know, people sitting at home will have a lot better idea what went on. But the fact I looked straight at the referee... You know, it's because I did think there could be a red here. You know, this guy could be in trouble. And, uh, you know, thankfully, you know, Steers was fine and he got up. But it obviously drew blood. You know, that can happen with an accident. But it, it did seem to lead with the arm to me. But Ian will know a lot better than me. He did. He did lead with the arm. I mean, it's one of those. It was, it, it, you know, you could argue it was an innocuous challenge. A strike has gone up, you know, as they go up, the momentum yeah. of the arm comes up. He definitely did lead with his arm. His His defence will be... You know, he was going for the ball. You, no one will ever know whether yeah. he whether he was being nasty or not. Um, if he'd got a red, I wouldn't have been surprised. That he got a yellow. There's arguments for both. You know, from what I from what I saw, um, it, it didn't look good. It didn't look good. But he got away with one. Maybe the fact it was so early on in the game as well has helped him a little bit. Um, but he definitely left his arm in on on Stamen there. And like I say, you probably the only person that really knows if there was intent there will be uh, to the striker. Yeah, and the the only other thing uh, in the first half that was was really notable was a little bit of a change in style. Ian, we've we spoke a lot this year about Huddersfield Town being very open, very expansive. Today was a bit different. We we looked to play longer, try and utilise Fraser Campbell in in behind the defence. What what do you think to that? Because I know people have been calling for a plan B um, to, to try and play longer. Um, at times it, it worked, at times it, it didn't work. 
Well, I think the last time I was on this, I, don't know, I, I was saying that a lot of town games I watch, it's a lot of sideways and backwards football, mm. which has its place with top quality footballers. But down near the bottom of the championship, I, I don't think, I personally, it's a personal opinion. We, we talked about the contrasting styles of likes, likes of Warnock in my era with some of the, you know, the prettier teams. And town have got pretty players. They play pretty football. And my argument on, on the show the last time was it, it just felt like it was going nowhere. So I was, I'm not too upset that they try to tinker with the style of play. And particularly in the position they find themselves, you know, you know, we can't sugarcoat this. It's, you know, it's kind of close to a desperation project going on here. Um, and I'm not sure pretty football is going to get town out of the, out of the conundrum they're in. I, I think solid, be solid, sort your defence out, which looked kind of, it looked a lot better tonight. It didn't look as though they were going to get cut open easily. I, I felt we are going to the goal, no doubt. The goal was mm. terribly <laughs> soft. But overall, you felt the defence and the defensive attitude of the team. So I don't mean the back, you know, the back line or whatever. I mean, the whole team seemed to defend better as a unit. And, and the way they tried to attack, I prefer that myself. I prefer a little bit more, not long ball, good direct football is, is what gets me going. I like fast attacking in the last third, in the final, in where it hurts opponents. I like that kind of football. And I just felt town, I would say over the last 18 months, to be honest, have dropped into that, you know, Wagner had a good way of playing, but he had players that were on the top of the game and things were happening and there were winning games at the top of the league, you can get away with playing like that at that level. And you get into the Premier League and you get the opportunity to play like that. But when you're struggling, players have that little lack of confidence. I'm not saying the, the players' abilities any less, but the con- confidence goes. They maybe think a fraction of a second is slower than, than they would do in a successful team. Um, so good, long way around the answer. I, I'm not too upset with them not playing so much tippy-tappy sideways possession football. Um, whether he whether he saw enough in that tonight to maintain, I, I think you do. I think you've got, what, 10, 12 games left um, that are going to be battles. You know, you, 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 town are battling to stay up here. Um, and, and and I just don't think pretty football is, is what you need in a battle myself. Personal, personal opinion. It's interesting that, that you say that because I, I interviewed Richard Stearman after the game and, and he said something similar. He said, we've, we've played some attacking, expansive football this year. Um, for whatever reason, we found ourselves uh, well towards the bottom end of, of the Skybet Championship. And, and sometimes you, you need to fight and, and battle to, to get out of these issues. And you could see that in the performance tonight, Sutty. Yeah, very much so. And Birmingham came with a, a physical 11 as well. You know, they, they, they'd really, you know, Juk, Jukovic up front, you know, he's a real good battering ram. I always think, you know, you get the ball up to him and it was a good battle I thought he had in the game. And, you know, their big tactic, even though they've obviously got flair with, uh, you know, the 35 Halilovic and, and Sanchez, there's flair in there. But their big tactic tonight was Mark Roberts' long throw. You know, they were missiles and it was yeah. just about getting bodies in the box. You know, it really was. It was sort of, you know, sort of basic, you might say, but effective because Town didn't deal brilliantly with them. You know, that chance at the end, that was another one where you thought, you know, on another night that goes in and it's it's horrendous and we're all on the floor sort of thing. But, you know, they came with the physical side and, and, and Town matched them. I think that, like he says, that's, that's hugely encouraging for the battles that do lie ahead, you know, starting on Friday. You know, you've got Cardiff who've won 4-0 tonight, absolutely flying under Mick McCarthy. We know what mixed sides are like and I like watching mixed football. I love watching Wolves when he was there. I enjoyed his Sunderland side that got promoted. I've not seen anything of his Cardiff yet, but I would imagine they're along similar lines. So that's going to be a real battle here on Friday night. So, you know, I think that really does stand them in good stead. You know, and I thought it was interesting as well, like mentioning the fullbacks, you know, you've effectively got a right back at left back and a young centre half at right back. And I thought they did well, you know, obviously going forward, town, use the fullbacks well. You know, when Toffolo's playing and when Pippa's playing, that's a big part of getting up the pitch with the ball. So maybe that was why they went a little bit longer as well. Because, But for that frustrating, poor defending, which I'm sure we're going to touch on for the goal, then, you know, Fraser Campbell's bit of brilliance wins the match. Yeah, let's touch upon the goals now then. Um, 
Ian, first of all, it was an absolutely fantastic strike, wasn't it, from Fraser Campbell? Brilliant. Yeah, I mean, but that, he's got that in his locker, hasn't he? He's, he's got, yeah. again, I, 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 the last time I was here saying, he has got that, he, he, he's got that touch of class, that touch of quality that he can pull out of the bag um, at any given moment. And he's, he's, he's going to be vital between now and the end of the season to keep him fit, keep him firing, keep feeding him opportunities. But like I say, sometimes he can make thing, things happen for himself. He's, he's just a very good footballer, experienced Dare I say it, probably the ideal striker for town in the situation that they find themselves in because he is the, he can be the difference in games. He would have been the difference tonight, but for but for the uh, the, the, the it's a terrible sorry. <laughs> you know, their goal wasn't a great goal. So other than that, he'd have been the match winner. Um but no, he's a good he's just he's just a really good footballer. He offers so much to the team as well, Sooty. We've we spoke about it. Uh, probably we we done fan, fans' heads in, to be honest, talking about the amount of work that Fraser Campbell does for this team and and in this system. But he, he showed that he's got that touch of quality, like like Ian just said uh, tonight with that strike. Oh, very much so. But you know, like you mentioned, the all round game, the amount, amount of um, headers he won today, and that's against a very physical defence. The flick ons he got. But there was just nobody there because Isaac and Benza didn't really get into the game for me. Dwayne Holmes flitted in and out a little bit, you know, obviously swapped sides and had a bit more about him. But, you know, there was nobody really feeding off. You know, and even if he didn't win it, he, he put enough on the defender that the second ball was there to actually win as well. So, you know, I, I thought he did everything you want from a striker tonight. Obviously, the finish was out of this world fantastic. But I thought the hard yards he put in and, you know, and, and you know, obviously came off five, six minutes to go. And uh, went with the new lad, but I, I just thought it was a really good centre forwards performance. That I really enjoyed it, and I just think if other players had been on his wavelength, or you know, obviously we didn't have this horrendous injury list that we all know all about, you know, maybe people would have been out of feed off it, and uh, and he might have got even more rewards from it. Yeah, absolutely. And then I suppose that it's really frustrating to concede five minutes later, like like Ian said, a really really sloppy goal. Oh, absolutely. And, you know, after they just got away with one, you know, Stearman put it behind, I think it was, for the corner. And like we mentioned Neil Warnock earlier, you know, if, I, don't, I don't know what Carlos is like in a dressing room after a goal like that, but I'm, I'm pretty, pretty sure Ian will tell us without swearing just what, what Neil might say about it because there's no way that ball should get where it does. And then does anyone put, really put the body on the line to block it? I'm not sure, like I said, I've only seen it in real time, but it was the way it got past the front post that got me. And then after that, Anything can happen, but that shouldn't happen in uh, to a back four to me. But obviously it did, and it's cost town. We've all known that that's one of Birmingham's strengths, the set pieces. They, they're a physical side, like like Sutty said, Ian. What what did or should town have done differently to to avoid that? Try and pick this one apart. <laughs> I mean, that's the million dollar question for managers. To, to, to that's why the managers, the good managers know what to do but I mean you, you know the Birmingham are coming to battle they're, they're in a they're in a, a bigger battle potentially than town so they, they have come you know they'll be over the moon getting a point to be honest they might think with a little bit of luck they could have sneaked it at the end like I said that would have been an absolute devastating blow because town did not deserve to lose tonight at all but um, they came with a plan it, it, and, and ultimately the goal they scored it, it sort of came from that plan didn't it it's High pressure, bodies in the box, all over the place. I just felt that Town really didn't help themselves defensively. How it beat the near stick on, oh, it looks terrible when you. I, I saw the replay. And it looks it looks worse in slow motion because you know the, the manager will be able to pick it to pieces. Uh, he will be able to pick and, and get everyone to have a look at what happened because it can only be described as a, a, a mess. And and B, it must only have been it must have been a lack of concentration because none of them town players lacked um, aggression tonight on the ball or off the ball. They, they put everything in on the line for the, the team tonight. They all worked their socks off. They were brave. It, it can only come down to a lack of concentration for that corner for me. And and the, and it wasn't just one player that shut off. I, I think there was a 
a few that shut off and it all happened in a fraction of a second. As, and as soon as one did, it seemed to have that knock on effect and Birmingham didn't shut off. And that is, that is their game. They came with a physical plan and their manager would have been absolutely over the moon with that goal. Cause he'll think they deserved that type of goal because that's what they came to do. They came to not to bully, to, but to, to be aggressive and, and, and win the set pieces and that's exactly what happened. Ultimately, that's exactly how they got a point. They, they flung a corner in. Somehow it got yep. land. I mean, it's, scra- it's just scrappy. It's just all round scrappy. Um, but they will be over the moon, and Town, rightly so, will be will be upset. And I think I think Carlos Corbran should be. He, he will be able to dissect the video, and, and <laughs> there is an answer to it. I'm not I'm not clever enough to give it, but there's an answer that a manager will have for his players and. I, I, I'm guessing it comes down to concentration. That, that's my gut feeling. It wasn't a lack of effort, a lack of determination. It was someone lo- lost the concentration and, and it had a knock-on effect in that six-yard box and it all happened so quickly. It needed someone to be switched on uh, and town get three points. Yeah, you're absolutely right. And there's probably no one more frustrated with that than than Richard Stearman's city. I mean, he... He came back in into the side. It was his first start since November after the hamstring injury he picked up in the win over Middlesbrough. Um, he was outstanding, wasn't he, today? A real leader on that pitch. He was. He's out, you know, <clears throat> I mentioned before, he's the sort of player I really love watching. You know, I, I, I just, and it's, it's, it's his organisation as well. Obviously, it was, a, you know, Naby Sarvel, obviously, alongside him, isn't, you know, he's massively experienced, and you've got two lads playing out of position at fullback. And yet you just watched him and he's continually cajoling, you know, his arms are out, he's keeping the line, you know, it's, you know, you, obviously when you're in an empty stadium, you can hear him shouting, you know, and it, 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 it needs that, especially because he's got a young goalkeeper behind him as well. You know, that sort of experience is absolutely priceless in this sort of situation, obviously. You know, and it, it did what every good centre-half is, he left one on the striker as well and got a booking late in the first half. So, you know, he's, he's you know, I, I, I just think, you know, with him in that back four or back five, as it might be, you know, in future games, I think Town are a lot. You know, I know it's sloppy for the goal, and then again at the end, you know, they, they could have won it with through Hogan. But I just feel a bit more assured when he's there, if I'm honest. And uh, you know, I think he's 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 going to be key for Town to get as, and I do think they will get out of this. You know, the you know it's all, all eyes on Rotherham Chef Wednesday, obviously this week, and Darren Moore was actually here tonight, so. He was probably happy with the result because it keeps two teams within touching distance and they've obviously got games in hand. But uh, I think, you know, if, if, if I, I do think Town will get out. I, think, I do think they'll be fine, but, you know, it, it still, still feels a bit frustrating tonight. Yeah, and I suppose with that, Ian, every game is, is equally as important now. Yeah, I mean, so again, it's a cliche, isn't it? It's going to be 12 cup finals. Just don't lose them. You know, it, the, the less defeats, it's as simple as that. There's enough points. Just, well, yeah, kind of. You, you don't lose any just. games. You, you probably <laughs> stay up, yes. Um, but they won't. They'll, they'll, they'll pick up a couple, few wins on the on the way as well. I agree with Sutty. It's, I'm not going to say they're too good to go down. I hate that. That's just the wrong thing to say. But I, I saw enough determination, aggression, um, and and, you know, Will to to try and win tonight to suggest that there's enough in this town team to 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 make sure that they stay in the championship this season. It's it's not desperate right now, and they didn't lose tonight. If they lost tonight, well, light's gone out. If they lost tonight, <laughs> you know, I might be thinking something different. But uh, uh, no, I think there's enough. I think town have got enough touch wood to stay up, and uh, as long as they keep producing, you know, the effort and the performance that, like that tonight, I think they'll. Uh, They'll do okay. I'll try and work this light out now. <laughs> I was going to say, I think it's your uh, your bedtime now, Ian. I'll I'll leave it there, uh, guys. Is that your thank hint? You very much. Is that a hint? <laughs> <laughs> thank you very much for joining us, guys. guys town, th- town fans, thank you for watching. Cheers, guys. <laughs> Take care. <laughs> See you later.